As we always do here, let's start with the big bugs you're most likely to encounter. The controls have been messed up. In trying to fix a bug from a previous version of the game, they actually made things temporarily worse. Previously, W on your keyboard did not work to move you forwards, and now A and S don't work for moving left and backwards respectively. Fortunately, this is easy to fix. You can do what they suggest and reset your controls, or you can be a rebel and rebind your inputs. You can even rebind to whatever your movement keys are currently set to, even though it doesn't change anything that somehow fixes it. In order to future-proof the game, some vehicles have had their hitboxes modified. For some cars, this is fine, but for others, the change can lead to some pretty weird or explosive results. Fortunately, re-railing the car or locomotive will permanently fix it. Unfortunately, there is one car that cannot be fixed right now, and that is the newer EBT hoppers. They just refuse to re-rail and instead clip back through the tracks. Until a hotfix is released, these cars are practically unusable. And there's one last little thing about the cars. For some reason, text has been shifted around on some cars, and not on others. Using something like Railroad Studio to fix this doesn't seem to work for some reason, so either you just accept it and move on, or you cheat in the money and buy new cars to replace them. These bugs are pretty big and honestly really annoying, but fortunately they're the only bugs I've noticed while testing things for this video. With them out of the way, why don't we get into the exciting stuff now? The biggest new addition to the game has to be the steel truss bridges. Unfortunately, these are static pieces rather than cool new splines, so if you want a truss bridge, you have no choice but to make it straight, and you're at the mercy of each truss piece's length to fit the scale of your bridge. Oh, and did I mention, you can't actually adjust their gradient at all? You're stuck with having them flat. It's annoying. Aside from these issues, though, there are two things going for the steel truss bridges. One, they look amazing, and two, they don't have supports. This does mean that it's fairly easy to skybridge, unfortunately, but considering how hard it is to place these things really high in the sky, I'm not concerned about this. The major important factor is track geometry. Instead of needing your bridge to cross any tracks below it at a 90 degree angle, you can now go at a much shallower angle and still have the track weave through and under the other track. Or if you're building a yard of some kind, you can use the truss bridges to bridge the gap without having to split up the tracks awkwardly. It's a little tricky to get working right, but it's super useful. Also, it looks good. There's five different paint jobs. There's no difference between the paint jobs other than looks, but I'll include an objective tier list just to annoy anyone watching. The next big change is for the Glenbrook, which has received seven new paint jobs and a new headlight. Of the paint jobs, two add patterns on the side of the headlight, while five have new, unique tender patterns. You can now seriously personalize each and every Glenbrook you add to your system. The headlight, meanwhile, might look identical to the first headlight at a glance. That's because it is, however it adds something special to your train. And you might have noticed it already, it's a little star where the number's supposed to be. You can use this to make your locomotive even more special, or maybe even try to make a replica Glenbrook in-game. There are now a few new sounds for modifying links and pins. There's an option to allow sounds to play when you're tabbed out of the game. Caboose marker lights can now be seen from a very, very far distance and are far brighter. Turntables now work again. This is especially hilarious to me since I posted a video explaining how to use the bugged turntables around 24 hours before this update went live. I'm not salty. In addition, they now stop on a dime, meaning no more turntable drift misaligning your train. Most of the rest of the fixes are quality of life or bug fixes that most people wouldn't really notice. There's not much else important to mention, but there is one last thing. 
The developers set their game to run on an older version of DirectX by default, which allows older graphics cards to run the game. This has increased frame rates and decreased amount of RAM used by the game. However, it also means that some computers that were not able to play the beta branch before might be able to handle it now. Emphasis on might, not every computer will be able to do this, of course, but it might be worth a shot to try and see if you can load the game, at least. What's the worst that can happen? The game crashes and you need to go back to the public branch? If you do try this, though, remember not to touch your graphics settings before making sure the game works to begin with, or else you'll be locked out of playing the game entirely unless you modify the game files directly. And that's the update. I hope this video was helpful, and I hope you have a good day. Cheers, folks.